Howdy everyone, today I am going to talk to you about Gerald's Game. Gerald's Game is currently streaming on Netflix, but before I get into this movie review, I'm going to talk about the book, Gerald's Game. As you can see, I actually have the book, written by Stephen King, and to be perfectly honest, I did enjoy this book, but when you compare it to Stephen King's other novels and books, I thought this was actually one of his weaker ones. The book is still entertaining, but I expect more from Stephen King, especially when it comes to, you know, imagery and storytelling. But I did enjoy this book quite a bit, and um, even though it's one of his, you know, weaker stories, I think it made for a very entertaining movie. The Dark Tower, The Mist, The Return of Pennywise the Dancing Clown in the 2017 movie It. You know, this has been a great year for Stephen King adaptions. Well, now that I think about it, maybe unless your name is The Dark Tower. But Netflix has been on a, you know, a roll with their original Netflix content, especially this year. The year of Stephen King adaptions continue with the Netflix original movie, Gerald's Game. Now, what can I tell you about Gerald's Game? What is this thing about? Let me tell you what it's about. A beautiful drive up to a beautiful lake house followed by wild weekend sex and $200 Kobe steaks sounds like a real terrific time. All this was meant to, you know, really spice up Jessie and her husband Gerald's relationship. Gerald decides it would be really kinky if he were to handcuff his wife to a bedpost. He gets rough with her and Jessie becomes, you know, really uncomfortable with him. The two ponder as to, you know, where their marriage is going. Gerald suddenly, you know, like he clutches his chest, his eyes go wide, and, you know, he dies of a, you know, like a heart attack, actually. And, you know, I honestly think he may have popped too many blue pills before playtime, if you know what I mean. Uh, Jessie is, you know, she's just handcuffed to the bed. Her husband just died. This is not a spoiler. It's in the book. It's in the trailer. But, and no one is around to save Jessie. The only one, only thing that's around is actually a stray dog who's really hungry and is willing to do anything to survive. She realizes she has very little hope of surviving, and she does everything in her power to escape, fight off this dog, and she begins to let the voices in her head take over. I know watching an individual try and struggle at a handcuffs for about an hour and 45 minutes uh, may seem a bit boring and like a magic trick gone wrong, but what the director did, uh, the director is actually Mike Flanagan, you may know him from the movie Hush and Oculus, uh, and co-writer Jeff Howard, they focus on Jesse actually trying to escape. You know, a majority of the action in the story actually takes place in Jesse's mind. Uh, Jesse played by one of my all-time favorite actresses, Carla Gugino. Uh, you may know her from the movie Match in Sin City. She actually does a really good job of being her physical character that actually needs to physically escape. On the other hand, she does a great job of being her character's inner voice and her inner thoughts. Throughout the movie, her thoughts almost feel like a separate character, and the voices in her head get the best of her actual emotions. What I'm trying to say is, uh, Carla Gugino did very well being the Jesse character that needs to escape, and the Jesse character who makes judgments and that are actually more hectoring than helpful at times. Yes, Jesse being handcuffed to the bedpost is actually a scary part of the story, but the, some of the terror and the real tension comes from Jesse's mind. With her mind, she is being harassed by her mindset, her past, family flashbacks, what she believes to be the voice of Gerald's spirit, and her imagination. I think uh, this was actually smart of the director and can show how our inner thoughts can lead to the terror that we uh, face in reality. One thing I have to give props to when it came to this film, I really like how they used the handcuffs as an actual symbol. Maybe I'm just overthinking it, but, but this is just my opinion. It seems like, you know, Jesse was already handcuffed and dealing with this situation well before the actual situation happened. She was, you know, she was trying to break free from not only the chains in her marriage, but trying to break free of her past, and she simply wanted to move forward. If you are someone who is like me, a horror head, looking for all the blood, guts, ghouls, and ghosts, I think you will still enjoy this movie. The movie isn't a horror movie, it's actually more of a psychological thriller. There are no serial killers, no jump scares, and actually there's not too much violence. 
The most violent part of the film is when Jessie is actually getting ready to pull off one of her handcuffs. This shows how Flanagan is a director who can deal with horror while also dealing with tension and great drama. Horror doesn't always have to be blood splatter and the typical stuff we've seen before. It can be psychological and Flanagan shows that very well in the movie Gerald's Game. I know you dog lovers are going to hate me for saying this, but the hungry stray dog in this movie is a real jerk. Gerald even referred to him as Cujo once and I thought that was a nice easter egg. The nerd and film geek in me will come out, but um, I thought the camera shots and cinematography were really really well done. Not just for a Netflix movie, but for a movie in general. You know, it makes you feel like you were in this claustrophobic environment with the camera shots and the cinematography. I thought it was a real nice touch to show close-ups and over the headshots of Carla Gugino's face, even from the very beginning. That way the viewer knows early on that it takes place in her mindset and that thoughts are the main engines and driving force of this film. I really did enjoy this movie. I believe it's a good take on the 1992 novel and it's actually a faithful a Stephen King adaption. Gerald's Game is more than just a simple survive or die type of story. It's about the horror that goes on within our minds, actually, and how that affects our reality. This film honestly did not disappoint me. Mike Flanagan once again made a really good movie. Mike Flanagan has not made one film that I can say I was honestly disappointed in. It has a proper ending that honestly feels earned, but this is just me nitpicking, but Gugino and Flanagan they seem to be trying just a little hard to push the message of, you know, women fighting back in a male-dominated society. I love that message for the movie, but it just felt a little forced and like they were kind of, you know, pushing it in your face. Uh, well, overall, I really enjoyed the surprise twist. If you read the book, I don't know if you'll think of it as a surprise twist, but if you go in not knowing anything about the book, I think you'll consider that ending to be quite interesting, actually, and something you might remember for a while. I honestly had a good time watching it, and I think most people are really enjoying this already. I'm always interested in a Stephen King story coming to the big or small screen. So if, you know, I think I really would love to see this again. I think it has lasting power. And so if you are um, a fan of Stephen King books, uh, I would say you would enjoy this pretty much. really enjoyed this movie a lot more than I thought. Like I said, this is one of Stephen King's weaker novels, but they managed to get one of his weaker novels and really pull, pull out a real good film, man. I really enjoyed this more than I thought I would. And honestly, I thought this was well acted and it was not a near perfect movie, but it, it's almost there. The, the year of Stephen King adaptions continue and every Stephen King adaption has been pretty good, except The Dark Tower. I felt like that was more of a TV show. But honestly, if I had to give this a rating, I would give this a 4 out of 5 hair pieces. So there you have it, folks. That's my rating. And I honestly think I'm going to watch this movie again. I really did enjoy this. So if you're someone who's actually a fan of Stephen King books, uh, what is your favorite Stephen King story that hasn't already been, you know, found its way to the screen? I think it would be nice to see Rage, Joyland, and Doctor Sleep. I think those would be some really cool adaptions, new Stephen King adaptions, that I would love to see find their way, whether it's to the big screen or the small screen. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and until next time, I will see you later. Cheese.